My name is David Breen. I'm a consultant abdominal radiologist uh, here at the University Hospital of Southampton. And I've been asked by Kidney Cancer UK to talk a little bit about what we're doing here in terms of treating small volume kidney cancers. Um, I've been treating these by image guided ablation uh, for some years. Um, uh, just to put that in context, traditionally you'd have had a, um, a nephrectomy or a whole kidney resected if you had a kidney cancer detected. In more recent years, surgeons have got better and better at partial nephrectomy, sparing kidney function. And more recently, as we detect more and more small incidental kidney cancers uh, or with imaging, like you're seeing here, um, they're presenting a bit of a conundrum. And uh, I'm a great believer, and many of us are now, that image-guided ablation is a highly effective and less invasive way of dealing with these small volume kidney cancers. Um, for a number of years we worked with radiofrequency ablation, um, but uh, in more recent years, certainly in the last uh, six or seven years, we moved over to cryoablation because it's much more accurate and tailored and uh, very well tolerated by patients and just as effective as uh, kidney cancer resection. One of the things myself and kidney renal surgeons are trying to do is spare background kidney function. Kidneys are more important than we know and uh, protecting kidney function reduces your risk of stroke and heart disease. So anything we can do to preserve functioning kidney but deal with these smaller tumours is, uh, is a good step forward. Uh, besides um, saving the misery of unnecessary operating or indeed cost to the NHS. So one of the questions is how do you end up being referred for consideration of cryoablation? Um, many of the kidney cancers that we're detecting these days are found incidentally, often interestingly when you're being imaged for other uh, symptoms and other illnesses and these things are detected incidentally and they're completely asymptomatic as a patient you wouldn't know they were there. Um, but the beauty of that is we're often picking up increasing these tumours early and we can look to deal with them early before they become progressive or cause problems. Um, it's striking to me that there's a relative lack of awareness of these procedures or less invasive, minimally invasive procedures um, throughout the UK and indeed Western Europe. It is slowly improving but it's taking many years. So if you or a friend are detected with a smaller kidney cancer, um, often it needs to be biopsy proven because very occasionally these things can be benign lumps on the kidney. Um, but up to even five and even six centimeter tumor masses can be dealt with very thoroughly, not by radio frequency ablation, but by image guided cryoablation. I think a more conservative estimate would be sub five or even sub four centimeter tumors. But that actually represents a lot of the incidental kidney cancers that are out there. Normally these days we aim to prove by biopsy that it is a kidney cancer. And then when you're in discussion with a physician or surgeon, um, often in another specialty, when this is raised to you that you may have a kidney cancer, it is worth saying at that point, um, is there an opportunity to have this dealt with by cryoablation or image guided tumor ablation? And uh, sometimes that is a, a new option even to the uh, physician or surgeon. Uh, certainly there are a number of institutions up and down the country. Uh, ourselves here in Southampton have a large volume of experience but also at uh, UCL in London, at uh, St James's in Leeds, um, in uh, Gart Naval Hospital in Glasgow. These are other institutions with uh, relatively well organized cryoblation services in the last few years. So, so what does the uh, procedure of a, of a renal cancer or a renal tumor cryoblation actually involve? Well, first off, you and your doctors need to be sure that it's the right thing to do for you. Some of the very smaller renal tumors can be very indolent and occasionally we do leave those alone because the act of doing an invasive intervention can be more problematic than the tumour itself. Um, if, however, the lesion's growing and it's growing more to sort of 25 millimetres, 30 millimetres, 
by the time it gets to those sort of sizes we tend to intervene as long as you're fit and able to tolerate a procedure and obviously image guided cryoablation represents a less invasive procedure um, after a review here the way we run it at Southampton is you're seen by myself or a colleague and you're also seen at the same sitting by an anaesthetist who's prepared to put you to sleep for a GA procedure for two hours um, we would review your old imaging look at the position and the uh, how we would go about doing that most of the tumors in any location on the kidney are approachable by this technique um, you come into hospital usually the night before or occasionally the morning of you're put to sleep uh, for a general anesthetic interestingly not because it's painful like traditional surgery but for this procedure so that we have you absolutely stock still so that we can target things very accurately under imaging guidance um, we would place a number of probes into the tumor on occasion we will do it synchronously with a biopsy and these are cryo probes and um, the aim being to disperse them around the tumor so that we can get a, 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 an ice ball that subsumes and that's how we uh, measure the uh, treatment and we can watch it evolve and subsume the tumor target and actually destroy it in situ in some patients we need to move the bowel out of the way about 50% of the time to make sure there's no bowel injury and that's all part of the the procedure itself um, on the whole it is strikingly well tolerated um, well over 96% of our patients go home the following day so I should clarify when we do the uh, ablation procedures the patients asleep often in a prone position on the CT scanner because we're using the CT scanner for guidance and uh, myself as the operator is actually in the room we use these devices uh, just to deliver the energy but very much the procedure is done by an interventional radiologist uh, who's in there judging and placing these probes and injecting fluids just in uh, through very small incisions uh, into the spaces and the anatomy inside the abdomen to push delicate uh, structures out of the way and to accurately deliver the uh, ablation energy to the tumor and deal with the tumor but injure as little of the uh, normal tissue around there as possible we do need to treat it with margins so these are simple ablative devices they look like something about the thickness of a pencil lead and we'll often put four and five of those commonly into a tumour in very accurate positions, plus or minus three millimetres um, around the tumour so that when we turn them on we can watch the lethal ice, as I call it, that's the ice that destroys the tumour of minus 120 degrees centigrade, subsume the tumour target and that's how we measure it and dose up the treatment uh, and make sure that it's safe and uh, guided and doesn't injure adjacent critical structures that involves very much an operating interventional radiologist with their understanding of the images and manipulating the tissues which is something we do in a whole number of other areas with vascular and liver disease as well it's not done by robotic surgery it's uh, using some small clever devices and the scanners that you will commonly go and have a, a diagnostic CT scan in to guide the radiologist in placing these devices. How about returning to normal work and normal function? Um, uh, again, these procedures are very well tolerated. Most patients, uh, we encourage that they leave hospital, the vast majority, 96% percent plus in our data the following day um, and we encourage patients to get up and about um, as soon as possible uh, you are able I usually say patients are able to drive within a week and in fact many patients return to work at a week um, which is something you often don't do after a partial nephrectomy um, and on the whole you're free to get on with your life I think we'd be cautious about contact sports um, uh, s shortly thereafter I think you'd want to give that a longer break of a, maybe a, a month or two but um, otherwise this is well tolerated and you wouldn't be aware of it um, sometimes there's some numbness on the skin uh, after the procedure um, but the body meanwhile deals with the um, 
small amount of dead tissue inside and over the period of a number of months, occasionally years, we watch it gradually involute on the scan and your body excretes that uh, dead uh, denatured tissue. So the beauty here is returning to normal function as quickly as possible. So I'm also often asked that if uh, image guided ablation or indeed cryoablation can be used for an incidental primary kidney cancer, can it be used for other sites of disease? Well, yes it can. Uh, again for smaller volume disease, usually of less than four centimeters or so in size. Um, occasionally and even in patients who have sadly already got disease that spread from their primary kidney cancer to other sites, we will treat uh, the underlying primary disease so as to spare the kidney and there is some evidence this has been around for many years that treating the primary can slow up the disease even when it's spread to other secondary sites so on occasion we will cryoblate a primary renal tumor even in the setting of metastatic disease for benefit to the patient alongside their planned traditional chemotherapy regimen also if the patient has got disease that's spread um, if they have particular symptomatology from uh, the disease, say it's spread to a lung or to a bony site, um, we will ablate or cryoablate, for example, a bone metastasis in the pelvis to good effect and uh, probably as effective as uh, focal radiotherapy as a single session treatment under GA. Um, and so that's another site where we will utilize image guided cryoablation, often dovetailing it together with the patient's chemotherapy as necessary. There is one other interesting area that is developing which is a, a belief that in the setting of metastatic renal carcinoma by denaturing a, a metastasis we may help stimulate the immune system. Uh, this whole arena of immuno-oncology is a very interesting area but there is increasing evidence um, that if we ablate a focal site of metastatic disease we may help to stimulate the immune system by exposing it to dead tumor antigen alongside uh, chemotherapy or immune stimulating drugs to help fight metastatic kidney cancer and again I think there's increasing awareness of this amongst the oncological community and oncology colleagues of mine that we can use ablation to enhance uh, various immune modulating therapies that are out there.